The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Hey, welcome to the program. Good to be with you on this fine day. It could be raining. I have no idea. I'm inside. How are you doing? Oh, my God. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Seriously, you're going to wear that? Are you going out like that? Look at you. Anyway, welcome to the program. This is what I do. Uh, Again, for those that are watching the program for the first time, I've been doing this for 30 years. Sometimes I sleep and have meals, but otherwise I've been doing it for 30 years. I've been doing radio, I did television for about 20 years in a nearby city. Uh, Then uh, broadcast radio, morning shows, that kind of thing. Then podcasting, syndicated stations, and that's where I sit at this time. So thank you. All right, let's get started. Uh, This is the way this is going to work. You don't say anything. I talk. You listen. Or you can multitask and uh, eat eat some cereal or a sandwich or something while I'm talking. That should work out. Look, I don't interview people. I don't do any fact-checking. I don't Google things. I don't know why you're here. Obviously, I have no way. I don't. I don't play an instrument. I do, but not on the show. I. I, I don't do that. I don't, I'm not going to do any magic tricks. I'm not going to astound you in any way, shape, or form. I'm not going to help you lose weight. Nothing like that. Nothing's going to happen. So, I mean, come on, come on. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm going to start uh, with something that is scaring the living hell out of me. And that is the concept. I I think I mentioned this a few weeks on the show ago, but now it's like getting out of hand. I was watching a television commercial. I watch a lot of television because that's what I did when I was a kid and and I got into the habit and I'm still doing it. So I watch a lot of television. And there was a commercial for uh, a Lincoln car. Uh, not the car that Lincoln drove in. I don't think they had cars like this. Uh, But it was, uh, Lincoln is, of course, the, manufacturer of, uh, of automobiles and they're known for their luxury cars and there's this woman sitting in the front seat of her car she's driving the car she has her hands on the steering wheel you know uh, two o'clock and ten o'clock I don't know I don't know why I, I never saw times on a steering wheel but apparently that's the position I, I don't know so she's driving a car and then as she's driving she has this flashback to her childhood and by the way if you're ever driving on a highway Bad time for flashbacks. But in a television commercial, I guess it's okay. So she has this flashback to the time she was a child, and she's riding her little bicycle down the street. And there, you know, I don't know why, but she's there. There's no cars on the street, but she's a little child now. She's back in her youth, and she's riding her bicycle. And she decides, just as a, as a, as a lark, to take her hands off the handlebars of the bicycle. And she puts her hands up a little bit, and I guess that signifies her freedom. It could also signify a car hitting you because you're not steering your bicycle, and now your bicycle is uh, has just taken flight off of a large mountain into a ravine, and you're dead. So I don't know how freedom that is, but nonetheless, that's the flashback. And then... It goes back to the car where she's driving, and, oh, my God, what is she going to do? Uh, And what she does is she takes her hands off the steering wheel of the car on the highway. What? And she feels the freedom of driving her car without putting her hands on the steering wheel at all. And that's the driverless car uh, concept that Lincoln Motor Company has come up with. 
And they're not the only company to do this. I'm starting to see commercials for other cars as well that have this hands-free highway driving. Okay, look, look, let me explain something to you. That's just stupid. But it's happening. And that's what's scary about this whole thing. Way back, there was an invention that the car companies came out with called cruise control. That's for people that are too damn lazy to keep their foot on the pedal while they're on the highway. Okay, you know, and I thought then, and and I don't use cruise control at all, because then you get into the habit of not having your foot in position if something split second should occur. So I don't like it. I guess you're supposed to keep your foot hovering above the brake. Uh, You know, stop it. Just stop it. We don't need that feature in a car. But it's been around. Some people use it. Most people don't. But now the feature has gone, like, way too far. Not only do you not have to put your foot on the gas pedal, you don't even have to steer the car or touch the steering wheel on the highway. Am Am I shouting too loud? I'm sorry, I'm theatrically trying to uh, relay this story to you. <laughs> anyway, that scared me. Uh, and then I thought, well, they're, they're not really selling cars. Yeah, they are. And, and they're selling cars that you don't, you don't have to have your hands on the steering wheel on the highway. This is ridiculous. This is, now I don't, wanna, I, don't, I don't wanna be on the highways anymore. Are you kidding me? <sighs> now the big story is, and I don't know when you're watching this show, I have no idea. The big story is that uh, San Francisco has introduced driverless cars. It's happening. They're driverless little minivan uh, bus cars. They have cameras all over them because all the sensors are, they're all over the car. You know, see someone's coming that way, someone's coming that way, someone's coming that way, someone's coming that way, that's checking the speed, that's doing that. If any one of those sensors, and there's like 20 sensors on the car, and you can see them on the roof and on the side of the car, if any one of them fails, we got a problem. These are driverless cars, and they are happening now in San Francisco. And people are starting to get very upset about it. Not because there's a lot of fatalities, or any, I don't even know. But these cars just kind of like do what they want, and they just stop and sit there. And it's causing tremendous traffic problems. Tremendous. Where driverless cars just shut down in the middle of intersections. <laughs> and there's nobody driving the cars. Hey, hey, move the car. Hey, move the car. There's no one in there to move the car. <laughs> I don't know if these things are delivering packages or what, but nobody's in the car at all. Uh, or if there is, they don't know what to do with the damn thing. You know, they, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to drive this thing. So it's causing tremendous traffic problems, and uh, the citizens of San Francisco, of which there are many, see, San Francisco has always been very open to technology and and new things. This is testing their frustration uh, to the point where they are going. This is a bad idea. <clears throat> So I did a little bit of checking in on this, and there are some cities and towns that do allow this. They had, it has to be by town vote or city vote, apparently, and uh, and it ain't working out traffic and um, traffic movement wise. It's causing incredible tie ups, people being late, and cars just stalling that are driverless. All right, that's bad enough. And by the way. That will never work in Boston. Boston, and I don't know if you know this. I assume you do. I don't know where you live. Boston has the worst traffic in the country. Not the second worst. Not even the third or fourth. It's the first. It's the worst. Have you tried to get into Boston lately? It takes you three hours to get there. Three hours of planning. And there's there's uh, tunnel shutdowns and tons of traffic. I I went uh, from the lovely city of Easton. I don't know if you know where that is. To the Marshfield Fair a couple of days ago. Lovely fair. I love the Marshfield Fair. Uh, on a normal uh, drive, it used to take me maybe forty minutes. 
Saturday, 11 a.m. in the morning, an hour and 15 minutes. And most of it was sitting on Route 3 going south from Braintree where there's that three-lane to two-lane thing. And cars just stop. You might as well just turn the car off, get a picnic basket, and a checkered tablecloth and go sit on the side of the road, eat your lunch. Maybe the car will be moving in about half an hour. It was that bad. Don't ever try that driverless crap here. Don't even think about it. <clears throat> Look, I'm choking up with anger. So I did a little more checking. Come to find out that uh, it's a possibility that some car insurance companies will not be insuring driverless cars. Excuse me? Yeah, because technically, if the driverless car fails, gets in an accident, etc., hurts somebody else, uh, the car company could be responsible. If they are found to be responsible, just see how long it takes to get your money for the claim. Could be years in litigation. I would not want to be hit by a driverless car, in other words, because someone's going to be in big, frustrating problems. So car insurance companies may not actually insure driverless cars, just like some insurance companies will not not insure uh, houses that are on the ocean, you know, a beachfront property, because they can be flooded, that's for sure. We're going to be paying money out to you for flooding. We don't want to insure you. So that's becoming a problem with insurance companies. You know what that means? The rates for everybody, whether you're in a driverless car or not, go up. Because I'll be damned if an insurance company is going to lose money. That ain't going to happen. Oh, they ain't going to let that happen. So everybody's premiums will start going up because of the influctuation of these driverless cars. Or... Perhaps uh, the owner of the car, the uh, who bought the driverless car, could indeed be responsible. But again, the insurance companies would have to pay through that because they have to pay for insurance. Can't drive without insurance in most states. Uh, this is a this is a lose lose situation. Did you ever hear of the win win thing? It's a lose lose. Also that all so that lady in the in the Lincoln car can put her hands up and go, Wee, I'm not using my hands to drive. All for her. And the thesis that I use in this show quite a bit is why are we changing things so drastically when in most cases it's working just fine the way it is? Same with uh, AI, artificial intelligence which is what I thought they were referring to, to uh, human beings, because they're like unintelligently, efficiently, artificially. But no, AI, it is AI, AI. <sighs> which I think is asinine ideas. I think that's what AI is. I, uh, I'm not into the AI. I can't stand the AI. I've talked about this before in the program as well. I tried to call, uh, was it Comcast or Verizon? It's the same thing. And uh, <laughs> a, a, a robot answers the phone and says, uh, I, I can answer any questions. Oh, really? How come every time I call and I ask that question, you can't answer it? Yes, I'm your, I know everything. I'm your artificial intelligence uh, robot. Thank you for calling. We value your business. Why don't you just go to our website and leave me the hell alone? Go to the website. It's got many of the uh, frequently asked questions and we'll answer many of your questions right there. So like, why are you even calling? Because you don't answer my questions when I go to the website. I want to speak to a person. Uh, So you start yelling into the phone, customer service represented agent and you're arguing with this thing press one if you have a problem with your service press 
Two, if you don't have a problem with your service. Press three, if you might have a little problem with your service, but it's not a big deal. Press four, if your shoe size is over ten and a half. Press nine, if you'd like a sandwich while you're waiting. Press seventeen, if you have a grandmother who lives in Louisville, Kentucky. I mean, come on! If there is any company that has customer service that can make the announcement to in a commercial, uh, when you call our number, customer service, a person will answer the phone. What? That's unheard of. When was this done? Not long ago. We, we do not use robots. When you call us, a person will answer the phone and say, hello, how may I help you? And you tell them your problem. They say, I'll put you through to that department. And when you get through to that department, a person who speaks English answers the phone. Now, look, I have no problem at all with people from other countries. I think they're fantastic. I love it. I love the culture inflection. I love that thing. But uh, if I have a frustrating problem with a product that I uh, bought from you or am presently using, I need you to resolve it right away in some type of communicative fashion where I can understand what the hell you're saying. I love accents. In this country alone, there's like three or four different accents at least. I don't think I understand people from the South with that uh, Southern drawl. I don't think they understand me with my perfect uh, diction. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I have a friend in Brooklyn. I can't understand a word he's saying sometimes. So that's okay. But come on. If, if you're talking to someone in customer service, you have a real problem with something, and they say something to you in response, and you have to say, what? I can't understand you. Can you repeat that? I, I, don't have to, I, I don't have time for that crap. I don't have time for that. That's not what customer service is supposed to be about. Now, I'm forgiving. I, I like everybody to have jobs. Everybody. But when customer service, you need to be able to communicate carefully, properly, and distinctly to me. And then we get this resolved quickly. But if I'm spending half the time, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. And I don't, know, I don't want to insult them. I don't want to insult them at all. But I literally can't. I can't. You're supposed to be helping me. I can't understand what you're saying. And there are still some uh, companies that uh, when you call, no matter what time of day it is, the robot will say, thank you for calling. We're experiencing a high call volume all the time. If you're experiencing a high call volume every time I call, other otherwise, perhaps I'm calling like always at the wrong times. A coincidence. Or you're always extremely busy. Hire more people. That's what you're supposed to do in order to service me properly. If I have to wait 20 minutes for a representative to speak to on the phone, your company ain't no good. I'm going somewhere else. I, I don't want to mention names. I called Verizon a few days ago. I had a question, a problem with my phone. Um, I did not understand the person I was speaking to when I finally got to a person. Part of the problem was we had a bad connection. Hello, I'm calling customer service of a phone company and we have a bad connection. You're breaking up. I can't understand what you're saying. That's not good. That's, that's a bad, bad image to portray. We're a phone company, but we have a bad connection. It's like uh, it's like it's like calling uh, Hewlett Packard HP. You know, my computer uh, is not working. Okay, uh, let me see what we can do here. My computer is slow. 
Your computer is slow. You're, you're a computer company. How can your computer be slow? What does that say for your product? It's all messed up, man. And it's all messed up because of technology. Look, I'm for technology as much as anybody is. And I don't know how much that is. But before you do this stuff, make sure that it's going in the right direction and it's always going to work accordingly. If I have to call customer service and they say, well, we can service you better on the website, you're basically saying, I don't care. I, I'm, I, don't, want, I don't want to talk to you. I, I, hey, I don't want to talk to you. Go to the website. Leave me alone. You're the company that's supposed to be servicing me, though. It's crazy. With the driverless cars, man, be careful because they haven't got this stuff figured out yet. If you Google uh, who pays for the accidents or damage to the car when driverless cars are involved uh, and the driverless car ran into me or caused an accident or, or hit a person or caused property damage, who's responsible? You know what the answer is on the Google machine? It depends they haven't got that figured out just yet. Then get the cars off the road if you haven't got it figured out just yet. <laughs> and they're not even sure that they will, shirts companies will insure you. Oh, come on. Uh, there are stories of sensors going bad on driverless cars and the cars drive into a building or into a telephone pole. I mean, I, I, come on, man. Yeah, people can do that too. People make those kinds of mistakes all the time. I get it. But the driverless thing, what are you solving? What are you solving? It still takes gas. Well, Ron, actually driverless cars make the road safer. Psychologically, not so. I can't imagine sitting in the back seat of a car and there's no driver there. It's like a headless horseman. I mean, I, I could never sit in the back seat of a car on a highway and nobody's in the front seat at all driving. And I'm supposed to sit there and go, uh huh, pa 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 pa. No. Computers fail. And then there's the backup systems for the systems and the backup systems for the backup systems of the systems. That's why they're totally safe. I mean, what, what am I sitting in a computer? Why don't you just put me in a car, turn the key and let me drive the damn thing. Key. Thing of the past. A key? Ron, did you say it, turn the key? We don't turn keys. We push buttons. Okay. This is crazy, man. It's eating is crazy. All right. I'm sure I'll be talking about this again because this is, uh, not only is it uh, angering me, but it's uh, it's making me nervous too. I, I, I can't imagine, I just can't imagine driving with cars that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is not the Jetsons, believe me. It, we're not even close to that. Uh, millennials, I apologize. You don't know who the Jetsons are. The people down the street, they have a tomato garden in the backyard. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. All right, the last thing I want to talk today about, uh, I have a friend, which uh, I use. I use the term friend when I'm doing these shows, but in, in reality, they're just acquaintances. They're just people. I happen to know their names. It's really about it. I don't know what goes beyond uh, closed doors with these people, but I do know their names. So I guess acquaintance by another mother. So anyway, so uh, this guy, and we're having a conversation, and we're talking about another acquaintance that we know. The guy's name is Bob, and uh, I'm talking to this guy, and he said, uh, have you heard from Bob Layton, uh, lately? And he said, uh, well, I'm not going to lie, I, I haven't. Excuse me? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I haven't heard from him. What do you mean you're not going to lie? Why would you lie to me to begin with? No, I'm not going to lie. Why did you have to preface that? In other words, whenever you say I'm not going to lie, I should suppose you're lying? If you have to introduce the thought that you're about to say, 
with a uh, with 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 a, a pre announcement that uh, what I'm about to say this time is not a lie. I who started that? Fr- I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Uh, do you do you like your 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 classmates uh, in school? Well, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm not thrilled with them. Well, no, lie, lie, lie. Uh, do you want uh, do you want chicken for dinner? Yeah, that'd be great. Are you lying to me? Because you didn't say I'm not going to lie first. You didn't say Simon says. Now you're confusing me. See, now that you're qualifying everything you say, if you don't say that you're not lying, my presupposition is that you are lying to me. Well, I'm not lying to you. Well, you didn't say I'm not going to lie. I'm not lying to you. You didn't say that. Well, I don't have to. I, I don't. I'm, I don't lie. Well, then why did you have to say that you are not going to lie? <gasps> you got me. It's also confusing. It's just also confusing. It just doesn't work out. Anyway, uh, there's been a lot of rain this summer, apparently. Why can't I water my lawn? If there's been, will I never be able to water my lawn again except for once a week? Is is that going to be what's going to happen forever now? Even when there's a lot of rain? No, you still can't water your lawn. Why not? Because it could be a drought someday and we got to save this water. Has it come down to that now? I can only use my, uh, I have sprinklers. I can only use them once a week. And I do because I'm, I'm into water conservation, even though it has rained a lot. I can, uh, I can hold my hose, which does not sound right. I can, uh, I can water my lawn with a, uh, handheld hose, but then people driving me, driving by my house, see me holding my hose in front of my house, and I'm not going to lie, that's embarrassing. I'm out of time. Uh, I don't know what show is coming up next. I have no concept which show was on before this one. I can assume that they are entertaining, but I don't know, because look what happened just here. I, I come into the studio once a week to do uh, the uh, visual version of the program. You can listen to me uh, every single weekday. We do a brand new show. We're up to about 2,500 shows, 2,500 shows, episodes. Uh, so listen in. There's plenty of binge listening to do. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. You can Google me on that Google thing. Uh, NewEnglandBroadcasting.com, every single one of those platforms, the Spotify, Shopify, Specify, uh, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, all of them, Pandora. So uh, join me there. There are half-hour shows. I usually do interviews during the programs as well, but it's also another session similar to this. I'll be back again next week here uh, where you're watching this. Until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, I wish you peace.